Welcome back to page 121. For a week, we're going to take a look at The Best of the Dragon, Volume 1. This came out in the early 80s. I'll look at the exact date when I go through it. And uh, gave us a bunch of articles that had appeared in Strategic Review and the early issues of Dragon. This was incredibly useful in the early 80s because we didn't have access to those articles any other way. No internet. So this guy got dog-eared along with Volume 2. They did four total volumes. I only bought the first two because I had the original magazines for the rest of the stuff. So today we're going to take a look at Best of the Dragon, Volume 1, on page 121. The Best of the Dragon, Volume 1. This was so unbelievably useful back in the early 80s. I had never read the articles from the early dragons and... Uh, uh, was that strategic review? I had never had access to those. I have them now, of course, because I had the uh, Dragon box set. The uh, in 1999 they reprinted all, the first 250 issues of Dragon and all the strategic review. But uh, the first thing we start with is a Rel Partha ad. Why not? I love Rel Partha. I have this set. These guys are uh, are beautiful. This was published in 1980. And I bought it new off the shelves in 1980. And we get a nice little introduction by Tim Kask. This volume is dedicated to Bill Hannon, who turned me on to making magazines, and E. Gary Gygax for giving me the chance to do it. So that's from Tim Kask. So we take a look at what was in here. The design Designers Forum, Planes, the Concept of Spatial, Temporal, and Physical Relationships in D&D by Gary Gygax. Very early look at planes. And in fact, if you look, this was colored most likely with colored pencils. How green was my mutant? The appearance of humanoids in Metamorphosis Alpha. <laughs> also, colored pencils. Coloring them in. I did not do that. Metamorphosis Alpha Edition. Some ideas missed in Metamorphosis Alpha by James Ward, creator of Metamorphosis Alpha. An alternate beginning sequence for Metamorphosis Alpha. So lots of MA articles in here. We have an ad for Take a Monthly Trip with a Time Machine Through the Limitless Worlds of Your Imagination. Continue our mutant article. We go to Hints for D&D Judges, Towns, and then the Wilderness, and then Dungeons. Very tricky because very little was had been published by in 1980 for Towns. And very little for wilderness. There was the village of Hamlet and uh, keeping the borderlands and things like that had been out. But most of the stuff that was being put out was for dungeons itself. And once we start graduating beyond the dungeon, which every group does within the first year of play, there wasn't a ton out there. We had to wing a lot of it. So continuing on our article on that, we go to the Game Mills ad in Oak Brook, Illinois. A uh, growing company in the computer gaming field. Whoa. 44 years ago. Languages, or could you repeat that in Old Wormish? Um, this looks like it's for D&D, &D, yep. Development of towns in D&D. I dog-eared this article, because again, there wasn't a ton of stuff on towns. Let there be method to your madness. Have your dungeon kind of make sense. The Play is the Thing by Thomas Fillmore. Uh, making the play fun. Designing your unique wilderness encounters. And we got an ad for Lyle's Hobby and Craft Center. I think they're still there. But yeah, it's, uh, this was interesting because it gave us a lot of other environments to play D&D in. Deserted Cities of Mars by Jim Ward. A lot of Gygax's uh, campaign had to do with Mars based on some of the John Carter of Mars novels. So here we have Jim Ward giving us a perspective on it. The Total Person in Metamorphosis Alpha by James Ward. It's so cool to see this stuff. Metamorphosis Alpha, for anybody who doesn't know, is the game that became Gamma World. Uh, Metamorphosis Alpha, you are aboard a massive ship, and the ship was flying through space, and something had gone wrong, and all the creatures that were in stasis had been exposed to radiation, and mutated, and the human passengers had had some problems, and you go from there. MA was a fun game. Dragons by Dragon Tooth. Uh, New York City... The Great Dragon. This guy was new. The greatest dragon ever made. Kit stands 8 inches tall with a wingspan of 14 inches. Weighs almost 6 pounds. Wow. Heritage Models in Dallas, Texas. How heavy is my giant? 
This was actually pretty important because we had no idea how much giants weighed. So if we got into things like telekinesis or just push or anything like that, we didn't really know what to do. We assumed that they were big and we just took a human and multiplied it by that. But this article helped. Supergalactic Dreadnoughts by Al Navco in Belhaven, Virginia. That was a pretty cool looking. Tolkien and Dungeons and Dragons. Why, no, we didn't steal uh, D&D from Tolkien. No, well, Tolkien took, took it all from uh, any kind of myths he could lay his hands on, Teutonic and Celtic. So I guess all is fair, right? The Dungeon Hobby Shop, Main Street, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Never been there. Notes from a semi-successful D&D player, James Ward. And an ad for Welcome to Arduin, the Arduin Trilogy from Grimoire Games in Berkeley, California. Some thoughts on the speed of a lightning bolt. How fast is lightning? Just under, or just under the speed of light, actually. The meaning of law and chaos in Dungeons and & Dragons and their relationships to good and evil by Gary Gygax. An early look at alignments. An ad for Gen Con. Uh, Gen Con 1980 from Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Gary Gygax on Dungeons & Dragons Origins of the Game. D&D is only as good as the DM. Also by Gygax. That is actually true. Only as good as a player, the DM, and the players. The Dungeons & Dragons Magic System. This actually helped a lot to understand exactly what it was that was intended by the designers. So I do remember reading this quite a bit. I knew it came from Chainmail and uh, the tabletop game, or almost the tactical game that was D&D uh, before it became a D&D or basic D&D. Uh, Fantasy Game Judges. Judges Guild. Out of Decatur, Illinois, about two hours south of me. Dragon Mirth, Monster Reference Table Edition, Hostile and Benign Creatures, by Wesley D. Ives. Miscellaneous Treasure, Magic Weapons, Artifacts, and Monsters, Editions and Deletions, Omissions, and Corrections. Ha! Okay. Their Search for the Forbidden Chamber. This looks like it was some prose. A story. And we got a little Dragon Mirth type thing there. And then we got new from Echoin uh, Games, Echoin Miniatures, Starships, Monsters, Science Fiction. Well, that's kind of cool. I like the Xenomorph. Out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Continuing our prose. Search for the Forbidden Chamber. Also some a little bit of a story. I do remember reading these stories and liking them because, again, they helped me kind of dial into what D&D was supposed to be. The Dice Man Cometh. Ah, uh, Dice Markers. I love Dice Markers. That's how you did the original ones, folks. You took a crayon and you colored in half the D20. So one half represented one through uh, zero through nine, or one through nine, and the other represented the double digits. And let's see, from our fine dealers in Illinois, let's see. Lyle's Hobby. Yep. I think they are still there. I've been there. It's got to be 10 years since I went past there. That's not on my regular travels. Continuing in the pros. We get a look at... Oh, it's just continuing with the pros. Continuing the D&D article. What to do when the dog eats your dice or some other calamity befalls you 20 minutes before the game club gets to your place. Yes, had that happen. Found out that the person I was keying the entire game off of isn't going to make it that night. Ah, what to do, what to do. It's quite the challenge. You have to kind of upend a lot of what you uh, had planned. Done that many, many times. Um, we get an ad for, from Chaosium. Glorantha, the most detailed fantasy universe in existence. Out of Albany, California. Excerpt from Interview with a Rust Monster. I remember reading this and just enjoying the heck out of it. Uh, fantasy 15S, 15 millimeter fantasy armies. 15 millimeter was a big, big deal back in the late 70s, early 80s. A lot of stuff was 15 millimeter. Fortunately, it graduated to 25 millimeter. Now it's 28 millimeter. How effective is a Panzerfaust against a troll, Heinz? So I guess you can have a Panzer Patrol in your D&D game. I don't allow gunpowder, so I'm sure I did not use this. TSR brings you the finest adventure games. Dungeons and Dragons, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Divine Right, Boot Hill, Gamma World. New titles coming soon, wherever better games are sold. 
TSR Hobbies in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Ah, TSR, I still miss you. Variants, Illusionists, generally appearing as a new class for Dungeons and Dragons. This is all before AD&D was really out. I mean, it was out, it came out in this magazine, before this magazine, but this is a reprint from an earlier magazine. Tombs and Crypts by James M. Ward. Halfling, Dwarves, Clerics, and Thieves in Dungeon. Dungeon is a was a board game that was popular at the time. I never played Dungeon. I've had, heard a lot of people really, really enjoyed it. I just never played it. Statistic regarding classes. Bards. Oh, the, the new Bard. The original Ranger class. An exciting new Dungeons and Dragons class. Strategic Review began, I believe, in 1976. So some of these articles go back to the pamphlet. Most of these articles go back to the pamphlet days. Uh, Wizard Research Rules. Witchcraft Supplement for Dungeons and Dragons. Priestess Witchcraft. Continue on. I, I used a lot. Witches were big in my early campaign. Uh, I still use witches. I, by and large, replaced them with hags for most of my stuff, but still. Uh, let's see, we got an ad for Gangster. This is all from Fantasy Games Unlimited. Villains of Vigilantes, Starship and Spacemen, Howers and Ho Homes and Hovels. Not too much of a, a skewer on AD&D, huh? Or D&D. Monkish combat in the arena of promotion. How do monks fight each other to gain their levels? I've covered that in my monk uh, art video. Miniature Figures Limited, largest manufacturer of war game figures in the world. Wow. Solo Dungeons and Dragons Adventures. Let's face it, we've all done it. You don't have a group, you're dying to play, you sit down with your dice in a quiet room, and you go ahead and you, you roll a uh, solo game for yourself. And uh, it usually turns out really well or really bad, depending on how honest you're being with yourself and the dice. <laughs> That's really how it goes. Lycanthropy, the progress of the disease. I used this article a lot. Lycanthropy is kind of a, uh, it's a fun spot with me. I love lycanthropes uh, or lycanthropes, depending on how you say, say it. But lycanthropy, the progress of the disease. Good article. The Japanese mythos. This was an early look at some Japanese mythic characters in D&D. Continuing on through that, lots of stuff to draw from here. Random monsters. And I don't mean wandering monsters, I mean random monsters. Continuing through the random monsters, got a nice illustration down there, I like that. And then we have the Westminster Gaming Society. <laughs> okay. And then we have D&D Options Demon Generation. Use the heck out of this article, too. It was convenient that it was the very last one. Then we have an ad for Complete Strategist, Wargame Headquarters, an open challenge to any and all gamers. So if you're in New York or New Jersey, headquarters for Dungeons & Dragons, the complete TSR line. And then in the back, we get an ad for Space Gamer. It was a magazine that featured lots of different role-playing back in the day. So there you have it. Best of the Dragon, Volume 1. I really used the heck out of some of these articles in the earliest days of D&D. Of course, by now, there are other articles that have been published over the intervening 40-plus years that have uh, kind of gone a ways to explain stuff a little bit better, make it a little more complete for your game. But back in the 80s, the early 80s, this is all we had. And like I said, right after I got into D&D, one of the first things I bought off the shelf was this issue of Best of the Dragon, and then, of course, Best of the Dragon Volume 2. I'll take a look at that in a future video. So there you have it. That's a look at Best of the Dragon, Volume 1. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Uh, it was fun to go back and page through this guy. I don't go through these before I open them up for our group. Uh, so it's a fun trip down memory lane for me as well as I hope for you guys. So there you have it today on page 121. I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. And I'll see you next time.